Going live. Welcome back to the channel, Den members. As I recently teased in an unboxing short, Today I am doing another review on a night vision product. Last year we got our start in the cheap digital night vision market doing a trash or bargain video on cheap Amazon bought night vision. Since then, and thanks to Night Fox, I have done video reviews on the Swift 2 and the Night Fox Prowl, a device for which I have high praises for given the $250 price mark. A lot of people were asking for a comparison to the NVG 30. Without having had any hands-on experience with the NVG 30, I really could only fall back to the on paper statistics and the price point. At which point I have to be honest and say the NVG 30 seems like it is in a completely different ball game than the Night Fox Prowl. Well, there was enough interest in the NVG 30 that I finally decided to reach out to the company Good Night Gear and see if I could get my hands on one of these monoculars. And Good Night Gear being the amazing company they are delivered. So today we're going to do an in-depth review of the NVG 30. The pros, the cons, my overall impressions, and a final verdict. Two things before I get into a review of this monocular. Number one, if you're like me and have a very short attention span and you're plagued with ADD, I have chapter timestamps down below so you can skip around. Number two is the full disclosure. Yes, Goodnight Gear supplied this monocular to me. Goodnight Gear, you are incredible. Aside from sending me the NVG30, I was also invited to set up an affiliate program through Goodnight Gear. If you use my affiliate promo code PLD10 on Goodnight Gear's website, you will save an additional 10% off your purchase site-wide. Aside from sending me the monocular and inviting me to join the affiliate program, I am not being compensated for this video. I am not being paid to do this review. And in fact, when I reached out to Goodnight Gear, I made it clear that I wanted to be able to do an objective, unbiased video. And Goodnight Gear was more than happy to oblige my request. It has never been, nor will it ever be, the intention of anyone involved with the Phantom Llamas Den to mislead or misguide any of our viewer base. We want you to have the most accurate information we can provide, especially when it comes to products and merchandise that you may buy for hunting, recreation, or self-defense. With that out of the way, let's get into a rundown of the NVG. We'll start with the interior components and we'll move exteriorly. The sensor package utilizes a 2K infrared sensor. That is an incredibly high resolution sensor for a device like this. I do want to call out that it records in 2K. However, not all 2K is the same. The viewing screen, on the other hand, is a 1080p OLED screen. That makes a big difference in night vision because you get a higher contrast due to the darker darks than you would with a typical LED or LCD screen that you would find in most other night vision devices. Another really cool feature of the monocular is it has a built-in compass with degrees. That can be very useful if you're using it in unfamiliar territory, especially at night when you don't have the sun to use as a guide. Now the sensor, while it proclaims to be an extra wide field of view, is a 40 degree field of view, which is over 10 degrees less than what the Night Fox Prowl offers. In actuality, in practice, and in the literal field, it really wasn't noticeable. It has a maximum view range of 300 yards. However, I really wouldn't push it past 150, 200. The NVG30 also has a digital zoom up to 4X. As you push it to a higher magnification, like all digital zooms, the image gets grainier and grainier. Lastly, the sensor and screen combo can either be set to 30 frames per second or 30 hertz or 40 frames per second 
40 hertz. I would recommend that as soon as you start using a device, you put it in 40 hertz because it smooths it out a little bit. Unlike a lot of digital night vision devices, when you turn on the NVG30, it automatically turns on the IR sensor. That said, even using the infrared sensor, you have several different filters that you can use. You have normal vision, which looks like just looking out through a camera. You have black and white, you have a sort of green filter, and you have what they call a white phosphor filter. Personally, that is my favorite of the filters and all the footage in this video moving forward will be filmed using the white phosphor filter. On the right side of the device, there is a rubber plug that protects the micro SD card, a manual reset button, and a USB-C port. While you can cast the image of the NVG30 to a phone using a mobile app, it does have the ability to locally record on a micro SD card. That is fantastic. The monoculars battery also can be charged directly through the device using the USB-C port. However, and this is a really nice feature for a lot of us, the battery can be removed by taking this battery cap off and simply removing the battery. The NVG30 actually does come with a charger that will charge this 18650 battery. If you have this thing running for four to five hours and it dies, you can just quick swap out the battery. This is a really good feature. Now, as I said a little bit ago, as soon as you turn on the monocular, it is already utilizing the infrared sensor. However, the infrared emitter is by default off. We'll talk about the menu and menu settings in a little bit. However, you can set the infrared emitter to come on and adjust automatically based on the ambient light. I like my equipment to be more dumb or manual. Therefore, to engage the infrared emitter, you long press the middle button and you will see an icon on the screen go from IR off to IR on. Again, that doesn't mean it's turning the sensor off to on or on to off. It just means it's turning on the emitter. Now the emitter is an 850 nanometer emitter, which means that it is visible to the naked eye, especially when you turn it to maximum brightness. There are three technically four settings. Right now, all I have done is set the monocular to IR on. You can see the light here. However, if I hit the button once, it goes to IR1, again IR2, and then IR3. I want to make this clear. This is absolutely visible to the naked eye. However, at maximum brightness, I cannot see the red emission from 10 yards or further away. Any other opponent that has a night vision capable headset will see this plain as day. I have read that the 850 nanometer emitter can be swapped out for a 940. It makes me wonder why they didn't put a 940 emitter in it in the first place, but that's a whole other issue. When Goodnight Gear sent me the device, they actually gave me a warning that the controls, the menu was a little finicky and not the most user friendly to get acquainted with. This is the control diagram for operating the NVG30. There is also an excessive amount of information regarding changing the menu settings on the NVG30. As a person that really likes to just mess with controls and figure things out, with their own hands versus reading the manual. I am going to tell you that if you buy the NVG30, it is far easier just to get physically acquainted with the device than trying to understand the manual. If you do buy this, don't be daunted by the manual. It is fairly simple to get used to. Lastly, let's talk about the exterior and the build quality. Overall, it's mostly a high quality plastic. There is a little bit of metal, but it's mostly a nice, solid, durable polymer. The mounting hardware is a good feeling refined metal, and overall, it just feels very quality. I do also wanna call out that this has a water resistance rating of IP67 far better than the other competitors. Overall, this is an impressive amount of technology in a very small, durable 
housing. That concludes the rundown. Let's talk about performance. And towards the end of the video, I will do a quote unquote comparison of the Prowl versus the NVG30, even though it really isn't a fair comparison. Aaron and I decided to take the NVG30 out to Llama Ranch one night because we really wanted an immersive, rural, true low ambient light setting to test this monocular. In a near absolute dark environment where the only light that is cast upon the earth are from stars, there's just enough contrast to get you around with the monocular versus the naked eye. However, in a very, very low light situation, you are going to want to either use the built-in emitter or an external light. For a standalone flashlight, we were using a pretty powerful but adjustable 940 nanometer flashlight. Again, using an IR flashlight does not cast any visible light. However, it lights the area up like a beacon and makes this a very powerful tool. The very first thing that we noticed using this without an IR emitter in very low ambient light there was a severe lack of visual lag. That has been the number one issue for a ton of digital night vision. While the refresh rate of the screen and the sensor are 40 frames per second or 40 hertz, there is none of the severe lag when there's not enough light, none of that processing lag. It may not feel as smooth as true naked eye vision. However, I cannot overstate how smooth of a visual this gives when scrolling side to side, even in minimal ambient light environments. That alone puts this leaps and bounds ahead of any other digital night vision device that I have used. I was absolutely blown away by the lack of visual lag with the NVG 30. Once you start using either the integrated emitter or a standalone flashlight, there is absolutely no comparison to other cheaper night vision devices. Navigating around Llama Ranch was absolutely phenomenal with this device. Invariably, you are going to trip and fall and get hurt on something you could not see in the dark. So as impressed as we were with this monocular, there is just one last thing to try out. How well does the NVG-30 work when firing a weapon? Hmm. Ooh, that's a good one. That's enough. And That's dope. That's enough. I can't hit the infuriator during the day. I'm not gonna hit it at night. The muzzle blasts on that are friggin' sweet. So, live fire. More than possible. Would you agree? Uh, with, with based off what I heard, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice that the infrared light was not emanating from me or my firearm. I was using my PS90 and Aaron was actually holding the infrared flashlight. That's because just like if you were to use the Night Fox Prowl, if you were to use the integrated infrared emitter in conjunction with a firearm with any kind of optic, the infrared light would reflect off of whatever optic you were using and blind you. Aaron was holding the flashlight because I don't have a small enough standalone emitter and I haven't added the supplemental tactical rails to my PS90 yet. I just really wanted to shoot my PS90 in the dark. So if you plan to use the NVG30 in conjunction with a firearm, you are going to want to have a standalone infrared light and or laser. I still need to get a peck. And I'm gonna tell you, with this, I am definitely now considering it. I dare say that this is deployable in a real world setting, far more than other digital night vision products. Aaron and I could not get over how well this 
functioned. That's not to say that there aren't some things that I would change about this device. I already talked about how I don't quite understand why they didn't just put a 940 nanometer emitter in the emitter slot instead of the 850. I will also say that the mounting system leaves a little bit to be desired. It works. It absolutely works. However, the hardware that comes with the NVG30 is proprietary to the NVG30. It cannot be mounted to a Wilcox mount. I have seen some stuff on Etsy that you can order and it looks like it's just a high quality 3D print job that will allow you to mount this to a dovetail setup so you can use a Wilcox head mount adapter. Another issue arises when you realize that what comes in a box is only the mounting hardware. Now, Goodnight Gear does sell the head strap, so there's no issue there. However, be aware that if you buy the MVG30, you will already need something like a bump helmet or that head strap. I said I wasn't gonna get into the menu issues, but I would like to see an upgrade to the firmware to make the menu a little more user-friendly. In the same vein with the firmware is the compass. While it's a really neat feature, I have found that it gets a little finicky. It can get off pretty easily anywhere from 90 to 180 degrees. And if you're trying to rely on the built-in compass to navigate, in the dark, in unfamiliar territory, that could get you lost. That said, it is pretty easy to recalibrate. The last mini gripe I have with the NVG30 is the microphone. It is not great. Overall, that's about as much negative feedback as I have against the NVG30. There is not much to dislike about this device. And the little bit that I did dislike about it, maybe we'll get fixed in newer iterations like an NVG40 or 50 or what have you. But at this point, for $500, you cannot get a better night vision monocular than the NVG30. I have been absolutely blown away by this monocular, and unfortunately, that has really cast into light a lot of the shortfallings of the Night Fox Prowl. These two devices are almost like comparing apples to oranges. And as a very wise man once said, despite popular belief, you can compare apples and oranges. There's just a lot of dissimilarities. Let's start out with the price point. The NVG30 costs $500, $50 less if you use PLD10 on Goodnight Gear's website. That is double what the Night Fox Prowl costs. The adage you get what you pay for holds supremely true in this case. I still hold that if you only have $250 and you feel like you just have to get into the digital night vision game, the Night Fox Prowl is the way to go. However, if you can save up twice as much money, I will hands down recommend the NVG30. The screen, the visual refresh rate, the lack of lag, puts this in a whole other league from the Night Fox Prowl. We didn't film any of the live firing we did with the Prowl, but I can say that while it was possible, it was by no means ideal. Using the NVG30 felt almost natural. Comparing the NVG30 and the Night Fox Prowl is not a fair comparison. The best way that I can compare the NVG30 to the Night Fox Prowl is through a computer analogy. Many people my age grew up with computers that only had hard drives. If you grew up with a computer that only had a hard drive, you really didn't think that your computer was that slow. However, the moment that you switched to a computer that had a solid state drive, an SSD, you realized how much faster those computers were. You never wanted to go back to a computer that only had a mechanical hard drive. It's all a matter of perspective. And that's why I say, if you only have $250 and you want to get an entry level piece of kit in the night vision world, go with the Night Fox Prowl. If you can stand to wait and save up $500, go for the NVG30 you will not be disappointed in this device. It is incredible, it is compact, it is durable, 
and very reliable. Again, I want to give a huge shout out to Goodnight Gear for making this video possible. Thank you so much for sending over the NVG30. We truly appreciate you. That's gonna do it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the Phantom Llamas Den. Comment down below on what else you'd like to see in the night vision world. Go check us out on X and Instagram. Follow us on Twitch where we get rowdy. And as always, don't take life too seriously and make it a great day. Why the hell are we out here, man? I'm cold. I can't feel my toes. We've been out here for hours. Michael said he's been hearing stuff and seeing weird things happening out at the ranch. So we're checking it out at night. Bear, oh, bear, 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 contact, contact. I thought we cleared this place out, man. I thought so too. All that right, was let's, bigger than all the rest. Let's clear this out.